Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, at tonight's meeting. Uh, to the public that's watching, thank you very much. To those here at the gallery, thank you. Alderman, welcome. We will start off by asking our city clerk to read the quotation for the week. Thank you, Mayor. What you do today will determine where you stand tomorrow. If the roots are weak, the tree will fall down. You must create a, small, a strong foundation. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the eighth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Would you please call the roll? Boren. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Graf. Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Verhasselt. Here. 16 present. Quorum is present. Next we have the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Alderman Hannah, would you please lead us, sir? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Approval of the minutes, President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I move to approve the minutes as entered on the record. Motion is second to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Before we go to resignations, I'd just like to give the public and the council a quick update with the storm uh, that we just, uh, thunderstorm that we just experienced. I was informed by, by Mr. Bebo that everything is under control. The first priority is to remove all trees and big branches off the street so we can have access for traffic and emergency vehicles, police and fire. A lot of the work that they're doing is simply moving trees and big branches to the side. People need to be patient with us that all those will be removed tomorrow. The massive moving of all or picking up of all that debris and trees and so forth will be done tomorrow. Tonight, it's, it, the effort is being concentrated on and we're moving everything out of the way so we can have traffic again. There's about 200, he estimated 200 or 250 trees that are down. It's quite a bit. That's why I was a little amused by uh, today's quote when we talk about a tree being uprooted. Wow. <laughs> How Did appropriate. I soon, wow. soon knew that. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> so apparently some of those trees didn't have a strong foundation. But uh, we, we, we lost some trees. Now, our rule in the, in the city is that when we lose trees, we try to replace them as soon as possible. So that the public needs to know because that's part of our, our uh, tree planting program and public works. And we will have updates on the radio and the newspaper tomorrow as, as needed. But for now, everything is under control. I've been assured the public should, should be at ease that we are moving on it and taking care of business. Thank you very much. Attorney McLean, resignations. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a letter from Cleo Messner advising that uh, due to con scheduling conflicts, she's resigning from the Historic Preservation Commission. I'd ask a uh, motion to confirm. Sir? Second. Oh, any, any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. And as far as appointments, these were brought in at the last meeting to the City County Shared Service Committee, Terry Kotzma, non-voting, Gary Maples, non-voting, Greg Wegman, non-voting, uh, terms expiring 4-30-07, signed by the mayor. I'm sorry, they were just being brought in today. Yeah, these are going to lie over, but let me explain quickly what happened. The uh, City County Shared Services Committee voted to appoint three uh, business advisors. Uh, to be uh, non-voting members of the committee. What they will do is provide valuable input from a business standpoint to the City Shared Services Committee. That's all they will be doing. Please rely over. Carolyn 14 to be considered for appointment to the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee as an ex-official member to fill the unexpired term of Mary Burkhardt. Her term expires 4-30-08, signed by the mayor. And these will also lie over. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. First on the list is Rosemary Tellen. Is Rosemary here?
Rosemary, do you want to give me your home address, please? Home address is 1605 North 12th Street. North 12th. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Perez, members of the Common Council, thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. I want to comment one moment on the turmoil and the conflict that has been taking place in this town over the last few months. I do have to report to you that there has been a positive side to it because there are a lot of community members who didn't even know who their older person was a year ago. And they have made the effort to find that out, to get involved in the activities of the city government, to find out what is going on locally. That's a positive thing as far as I'm concerned. I would also like to thank Alderpersons Serta, Ryan, Kittleson, and Hannah for having the courage to vote no on the 23rd Street issue in hopes of having the chance to make an unbiased comparison to the Vanderbart property. I truly believe that the Common Council would look at both of those sites. Hopefully, by having both sites on the table, they would have had a little more leverage with the county in dealing with the 23rd Street site. Needless to say, I was surprised and I was disappointed that the vote had very little discussion and went ahead as it did. My greatest fear right now is for the design of the police station, regardless of what site it goes on. An architectural firm with a great deal of experience has been retained, and I'm not sure why. I have already heard designs, ideas coming from older persons whose one goal is to cut costs. Now, cutting costs is important, but it cannot be at the cost of sacrifice to the police department. If we are already talking about losing a dispatch center, we're already talking about losing garage facilities, we're talking about a slab on grade at the 23rd Street site. And frankly, if you really want to cut costs and go cheap, then you can go a double-wide trailer for the police department and just bring in some pods to sit next door to store the uh, evidence in. And don't take that seriously because I do not mean it that way. The mayor and the common council are charged with fiscal responsibility, which means providing the community with the greatest possible facilities at a reasonable, responsible cost, not just cheap. This police center needs to be designed for future generations, not just for the current populations. And it's ironic that we're talking about the roots are weak, the tree falls down, you must create a strong foundation. We are building a police center for 50 years from now for our children, for our grandchildren, for a common council that will be sitting here probably in this room and is going to have to deal with problems if this facility is not built correctly now. You must build for the future and I believe you need to look at building a dispatch center regardless of what the feasibility study says. You need to plan on that. We're talking about a groundbreaking when we don't have a police station designed, we don't have a site picked, but we have the groundbreaking hopefully set. And I think that's a little backwards. I think you need to look at what we can afford, what you're going to design, where you're going to put it, and then where it's going to be, when it's going to be built. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Next would be Mike Kepler. <clears throat> Mike, can you give me your home address, please? Uh, 2533 Lakeshore Drive. No trees down in front of my house. <laughs> You'll have five minutes, sir. Good evening. On May 1st, I appeared before this Common Council, as I am on this state, in behalf of the Schwinn County Taxpayers Alliance. I would like to please give a quick review from our perspective of the progress of the issues we presented on May 1. A copy of those issues was placed on your desks for your convenience, although it does have today's date on it. We feel progress is being made, be it due to our humble request or from the request of others or a combination thereof. First of all, Committee of the Whole. We thank the Common Council and the Mayor for starting to meet on a regular basis. The significance of this will continue to evolve. Shared services and costs. 
The Shared Services Committee started meeting after a one and a half year hiatus. Thank you. In fact, as a result of that first meeting, a resolution has been presented, I'm told, regarding joint dispatch. Since information never hurt anyone, we suggest the Council support this resolution so you can digest and debate the proposed study so that the entire Council can make an informed, educated decision. Outsourcing of services. It is our understanding that while there has been some thought and discussion regarding the issue, we feel that this issue should be a priority, especially now with the scheduling of the next budget planning at hand. Staffing issues. Progress has been initiated with the forming of the Renumeration Committee to look at city wages and benefits compared to the private sector. In addition, changing a part-time municipal court clerk from a high paying job grade 5 to a more suitable job grade 3 is going to save the taxpayers money without reducing the level of service. Although much more attention needs to be given to staffing issues, we thank the Mayor and the Common Council for the progress to date. Finally, and very important to us, stormwater fee. Progress is being made in the form of a resolution before you tonight to repeal the stormwater fee. We ask that this resolution be sent to the appropriate committee for full discussion and citizen input. The resolution is great. It tells us that the Common Council is willing to analyze this program to determine if the city is getting what we expected and intended. <clears throat> now, after observing this Common Council and the Committee of the Whole and the various standing committees overall, it looks like the Common Council is clicking. Discussion and debate is centered on issues and personal differences are not evident. Cooperation between the Mayor and the Common Council also seems positive. This will move the City of Sheboygan in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the list would be Jeff Shuko. Jeff, can I have your home address, please? 2303 South 17th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I have a video. I have a video here. I wanted to show everyone. This is something that I've been accumulating for the last uh, three weeks now. But before I uh, get going, I wanted to wish everyone a good evening, Your Honor, Council members, and citizens. Not long after the gulls were moved out of Washington Square, adjacent buildings, and the industrial park, the birds were found to be relocated on our beachfronts. In subsequent uh, mornings, the birds were found to be roosting before the alewives even came into our shores. The new $90,000 beach groomers been observed uh, set up and operated no more effectively than the old one. The east side of Blue Harbor's roof has already been badly stained and if left uncleaned will result in substantial cost to repair. Dogs continue to be run on Deland Park Beach, Blue Harbor Beach and Kings Park Beach. The large flocks of birds are contaminating the above mentioned beach area sand. Multiple yellow flag beach water warnings have already been posted along with a red flag beach closed at the land park this summer. Visitors to Blue Harbor Beach have been seen driven back up off the beach by large flocks of birds and the droppings which are all over. A grant form for municipalities was given to our mayor and I requested help in expediting a grant application through Senator Leibham. I emphasized to him the negative effects to our tourism already. With the substantial investment in Blue Harbor with taxpayer money, this entire situation needs to be rectified immediately. If left unchecked, these birds will be back next year to nest on our beaches. What can be done? Well, birds will as of now need to be kept out of the city, city parks, school fields, industrial parks, holding ponds, and beaches within the city limits. This includes all open flat rooftops. Requirements until now would be seen as labor intensive, 
A simple industrial park can take four full-time employees two years with no guarantee they won't come back. My company can guarantee exclusion of birds from all areas of the city and at far less cost than ever before possible. Also, proper setup of groomers and training of operators can also be provided by myself. Cleaning the roof at Blue Harbor, I, I could also uh, handle, seeing as I used to do those sort of things in my, in my former trade as a state indentured millwright. And I did also provide to the council members and uh, your honor and the city attorney uh, a little photo documentary of what's going on, uh, which I had passed out before the meeting started. Uh, rather than take up any more of your time, I don't know if we already went past the part uh, which showed Blue Harbor roof, but yep. the, these uh, shots I were taken actually some early in the morning, but most of them were taken in mid-afternoon where you can see beach combers out on the beach uh, when the beaches are busier. And by then, actually, there are fewer numbers of birds uh, congregating on the beaches at this time. Early in the mornings is when the damage is really being done because I am, I'm taking uh, head counts of eight to 10,000 birds on these beaches in early morning. When they come in off the lake, just before the crack of uh, light. And in lieu of these activities down there, I, I also wanted to, to thank the police department for the, boy, fantastically immediate response that I received when I ran into a little problem with uh, uh, an out-of-town visitor down there that was shooting off fireworks. And uh, he didn't appreciate what I had to say about that, and he started shooting fireworks at me. And I informed the police department, and their response was, was fantastic. It was immediately and very thorough. Uh, aside from that, the beaches that you're observing right now, uh, this one I believe is immediately in front of Blue Harbor Beach. Uh, Deland Park Beach is about in the, in the same situation and unfortunately the blue railings along here that you're seeing now I've just noticed the morning, this morning the birds are starting now to congregate and move back up the river into the city. They're being drawn in there, of course, by the alewives, which last year, when I volunteered to help control this situation, we pretty much avoided all this because I was able to drive the birds out of the area. And what I would have in mind doing is moving them north of town, uh, just north of the Pigeon River, out of the city limits, and have them join another colony Excuse me, Jeff. That's existing there. <clears throat> Your five minutes are up. Do you need an extra little bit of time? Actually, uh, no. But if anyone would, would like to view these photos, I'd be happy to provide them. I have about 1,500 photographs and other documentation. Thank you. Thank you. Take your time. You're okay. Next on our list would be Vicki Hall. Vicki, can I have your home address, please? It's 925 North 4th Street. North 4th? And you will have five minutes. Closer. Thank you. You're welcome. Mayor Perez, members of the Common Council, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk tonight. Um, as a representative of Friends of Sheboygan's Parks, I am here tonight to thank you and thank the city for the wonderful Fourth of July events at so many of our city's excellent parks. I've lived here in Sheboygan for about 14 years, and in that time I think that this event was the best Fourth we've ever had. It seems like Sheboygan has truly become a destination city for the Fourth 
and I commend you all for making this a truly spectacular day. One of those events, or one of the events uh, was Fourth Fest, and it was at Sheridan Park in which the Friends of Sheboygan's Parks participated in the fun with lots of volunteers to help out. This family-centered event had pony rides, a slide, rock climbing structure, bounce house, petting zoo, and a food booth from the Friends group, and great music from Judy Stock and High Tech Sounds. That day I volunteered my time from 1 to 5 p.m., Seeing so many families from across the street to across town flock to this family-friendly event and having a really fun time was immensely gratifying to me and my coworkers. To us, Fourth Fest was a huge success and we would like to extend our deepest thanks to Susan Hart of the Mayor's Office who did an outstanding job pulling so much of this day together, Mayor Perez and the Common Council for your vision of a city in celebration, and Paul Meyer and our city staff for their work at all the park events. And finally, my personal and heartfelt thanks goes to our, our great volunteers and donors. Thank you so much. I hope that Sheboygan continues to collaborate in great fourth events. Already Sheboygan is gaining a great reputation as a great place by a great lake to spend the day for our residents and guests. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. And last on the list would be Lee Montemayor. And Lee, can I have your Thank home you. address, please? 1015 Logan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam City Clerk Richards and Mayor Perez and this council for allowing me the time to express my views. I would like to thank all the citizens of this Sheboygan for making this long-awaited dedication of the Lao Hmong American Memorial a great and deserving successful event. Our city made a great impression to all the veterans and distinguished guests who traveled great distances to attend this dedication. Our city made a great impression on these people with our friendliness the clean city, Lake Michigan, and the rousing appreciation of our community gave to these soldiers and their families who sacrificed so much during the Vietnam War. We will forever honor and respect our friends, brothers, sisters, sons, fathers, and mothers for the greatest sacrifice, the giving of life for another human's need. The ultimate sacrifice of lives lost in this terrible war will forever be remembered in our city. To those young men and women and their families, I say thank you. I would also like to thank Mr. Ray Hernandez and all the numerous other individuals that were involved with this project for their great leadership in making this dream of a memorial to honor our comrades of reality. Thanks also to all the organizations, business leaders, and all the Sheboygan citizens and the volunteers for their support of this project. This great effort makes me very proud to be a Sheboyganite. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would like to thank all the citizens who addressed the council tonight and invite anyone to all to feel free to uh, address the council at any time. The next item on the agenda will be a notice, a notice of a public hearing on the vacation and discontinuance of an unpaved alley between Maryland Avenue and Illinois Avenue and west of South 17th Street. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council with respect to this hearing notice? Is there anyone? President Burke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to close the hearing. Motion and second to close notice of hearing. Is there any discussion on that? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have a, a hearing, a hearing to amend the zoning of property located at 1804 Martin Avenue from Class Urban Commercial to Class Urban Industrial Classification. 
Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? President Berg. Move to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close the hearing. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda, President Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to approve and adopt all RCs, approve and file all ROs, and put all general ordinances upon their passage. Thank you, uh, President Berg. Would you mind uh, not including 8-4, which will lie over? Correct. Okay. Uh, not to include 8-4, which will lie over. Thank you. Is it okay with you, uh, Vice President Serta? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a motion to uh, on the consent, 8-1 through 8-21, excluding 8-4. <coughs> Under discussion, Alderman uh, McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I'd like to pull 8-9 um, and have a separate vote on that, please. I'm sorry, what? 8-9. Eight, 8-9 nine. Eight, nine for a separate vote? Please. 8-9 is being pulled for a separate vote. Are you going to make a motion? <clears throat> I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Motion and second to accept and adopt the RC. Under discussion? Only 8-9 for a separate vote. There being none, you want a roll call? No? Do an aye. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Abstain. One abstention. Alderman Graff. Motion carries. Now we will take a vote on everything else except 8 9 and 8 4, which will lie over. Please call a roll. <clears throat> Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graff? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communication and petitions. Communications and petition 822 through 825 to be referred. Report of officers 2, <clears throat> 826 through 836 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 837 by Alderman Meyer accepting, it, accepting the warranty, warrant deed from Lee Realty of Sheboygan Incorporation for a retention pond property in the settlement at Lost Creek. Alderman Meyer. I would ask that this resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 838 by Alderman Montemayor, authorizing the mayor to execute a request to rezone certain city-owned property. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Berg. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 839 by Alderman Radke, granting the Liars Club permission to sell al alcoholic beverages upon city property. Alderman Radke, we need a motion to suspend first. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to suspend the rules. Motion and second. Is there any objection to that? Please continue. Your Honor, could I take H40 right along with it? It's basically the same thing, just do both at the same time. We need to suspend the rules on both of them, actually. Well, yeah. you can. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Is there any objection to spending 840 also? None? Please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolutions be put upon their passage. Mo motion and second to put resolution uh, 839 and 840 upon their passage. Under discussion, there being none, please call the roll. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 841 by Alderman Susha, Graf, and Vanderweel, adding three business persons as non voting members to the City County Shared Services Committee. Alderman Susha. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Kittleson. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I, I just would like to clarify, why are we putting the business persons on as non-voting members? Why, why are we doing that? Oh, Alderman Sushi, you have a response to that? Yes. Thank you for asking that question, um, because we did discuss this in depth in the committee. And what we decided is that what it comes down to is that if the county wanted the city to do something, and the three business people sided with the county, and the three city voting members decided we didn't want to do something, technically the county and the three business leaders could try to push us into doing something that the city's not comfortable with, or vice versa. And we decided that we need buy-in in all the decisions, and it would probably be better to have a tie vote if the three county people would vote yes on an issue and the three city vote no. That would probably be a better situation because we're not going to be able to force one side to do something that they don't want to do. But we did feel that we needed a business perspective and that they would be able to contribute to some of the decisions we have to make. And that's why we want their expertise on the committee. Um, and hopefully that answers your question. I was at the, uh, I was present at that meeting, Alderman Kittleson. The discussion was very good. It went back and forth. And ultimately, both county and city agreed that that was the best way to do it. So it, it, it was all, they were, everybody was satisfied, yes. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also had questioned why were they non-voting, because I think they're three excellent individuals, and I hope that even though they're non-voting participants, I hope that you, you weigh their opinions carefully, because I think they bring an awful lot to the table. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. They, the three individuals were very willing to serve and, all, and very excited, so I'll tell you that. Anything else? Okay, on 841, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Clay Younes, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. and Davis. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 842 by Alderman Susha, Graf, and Vanderweel for a feasibility study for a joint emergency communication center between the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that this resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to emphasize that this is a feasibility study only. Um, no decisions have been made other than we're looking for some information. So I'd ask that the alderman uh, pass this tonight so we can get the information we need so we can move forward. Thank you. Okay. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd actually like to make a motion to this um, resolution. I'm sorry, what? I'd like to make a motion to this resolution. To amend. Uh, to amend. Amendment. Okay, a I'm sorry. Motion to amend this resolution. Okay. Um, under the second paragraph, add, whereas the City of Sheboygan, through the Shared Services Committee, should conduct its own feasibility study outlining how they could potentially provide emergency dispatch services for the county. There's a motion. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can somebody turn that other one off, please? We're just going to have to suffer a little bit here. Excuse me, uh, Vice President, sir. There we go. Thank you. Okay. To insert under the second paragraph, whereas the city of Sheboygan, through the Shared Services Committee, should conduct its own feasibility study outlining how they could potentially provide emergency dispatch services for the county. There is a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. Second under discussion. Un Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I think if we're going to look at this um, issue earnestly and ask the county to uh, utilize its resources, their time, their staff to conduct a feasibility study, I think we should also do it the same. That way we can give a fair comparison who could provide the best service. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion uh, on the amendment, if I understand it right, I think it's a good idea because it seems like we're, we're asking the county to take over or the county to, to do more and we're not saying, oh yeah, okay, well we'll do this. So I think this way we're kind of helping out the county and saying we could do it for this and you can do it for this, so which is the better deal? I, um, I'll vote in favor of the amendment. 
Thank you. Alan um, Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, being on the Shared Services Committee, and I, I know Alderman uh, Van der Wille is also, um, but I'm under the impression that when we put this together, we were thinking and looking at both ways, not only dispatch, but the other things that were mentioned at the at the committee it was also always going to be a give and take. You know, maybe we'd be better at doing something, and the county would be better at doing something. And part of the committee would, um, part of this study would involve who is best equipped to do it and who could do it at the at the least cost of the taxpayers. So I I'm I'm not sure that this um, amend, um, amendment is necessary, but um, I'll think about it at this time. Okay. And, and Alder McGrath has a good point. Uh, the county's approach to this thing, and I think they were basing it, and no offense, on past history, is that if they were to initiate any type of study and it wasn't backed by the council in the form of resolution, then it didn't carry any weight. And they just simply were not going to put any time and effort into doing anything like that unless it had the backing of the city. And that's where it stood. And my understanding, and I was present at that meeting too, Alderman Vanderwill, you were too, is that this the resolution covers that, okay? It covers the city and the county side, and it's going to be a back and forth type of thing. But the city was willing to look at it. The county wasn't unless this council uh, showed some, uh, some uh, uh, stronger, showed a stronger position by actually passing a resolution. So that's where it was. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I, I agree that uh, if that is the intention, however, I think it should be put in, in, in writing in this. The way this reads, it, it reads that they, being the county, could potentially provide emergency dispatch services for the city. Uh, it doesn't say anything about the city potentially providing dispatch services for the county. I believe that shared services is necessary. It's a great thing. Uh, it needs to happen. However, uh, I, I, I believe shared services is indeed shared services where the, the, the city and the county both share services, not that the county uh, it just uh, uh, takes over providing services for the city. So I, I agree with uh, the amendment by uh, Alderperson Serta. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Ryan, we've got a lot of lights blinking. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to agree I, agree. I think we should make this crystal clear that um, the city needs to look at this also and how you know, it would benefit us as opposed to the county. So I, I would support that amendment just to keep it thank very, you. very clear. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Alderman Presenberg. Uh, yes, thank you. And I think I will also agree with uh, the fact that we need to be flexible in looking at who can best deliver services and then cost out you know, the portion of cost. I, the, uh, to look at the structure of uh, Alderman Serta's um, amendment, uh, I wonder if we could achieve the same thing by basically uh, changing the resolution to indicate that the mayor is authorized and directed to contact Sheboygan County to request information for this feasibility study, which includes structure, costs, and other personal information for Sheboygan County to potentially develop rather than provide emergency dispatch services with the city of Sheboygan. That seems to put us more on a collegial basis uh, rather than having a study just with the city doing it and with the, with the county doing it. And I'm wondering if that would meet with Alderman Serta's approval. We have Alderman Montemayor next. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this document seems as though it's uh, a vote of sincerity on our part to actually consider what the information that the, that the county comes up with. Now, uh, Alderman Berg's words, that those few changes sort of made sense that the county would still know that we're sincere rather than um, guessing that maybe they, we don't mean what we say and they don't mean what we say. I think we have to show the county that, yes, we actually do want some true information. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Susha, did you wish to speak? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, actually, the, this resolution was written pretty much to reflect the discussion that we had in the Shared Service uh, Committee. And quite honestly, the, the county isn't real happy with the city these days because of things that have happened in the past. And they asked us to draft this document to show our sincerity that we are truly willing to work with them. 
All we're doing here is obtaining information. Um, we can get it Alderman from the city Leon, side. Alderman speaking. We can obtain the information from the city. We can obtain the information from the county, and it can all come back to the committee. We're just obtaining information here. I think that it's pretty clear what the committee is requesting, and I really don't think this is a big enough issue to upset the county by adding an amendment to change what the committee is requesting. So I would suggest that we vote down the amendment, but yet we pass this resolution to obtain the information. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Serta, you are next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't foresee that my amendment is upsetting the county. We are still being earnest in exploring what this document says, that we're going to be working with the county um, to address Alderperson Berg's, um, his suggested amendments. Just changing the word provide to develop and for and with doesn't necessarily grant us, the city, to again be looking at our own feasibility study. So I would um, not be in agreement with just making those specific changes. I think I can give the same argument that, again, this is just requesting information. We're going to be doing this ourselves. I don't think that's going to jeopardize our relationship with the county. Thank you, Alderman Serta. And again, I think the point that Alderman Susha is making is that if you, were, if you had been at the meeting, you would have understood the context and, and the substance of the discussion that was going on. And that, that's all. Alderman Hanna, you're next, sir. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. I kind of like the, uh, the suggestion of, of changing to develop and with. I just like the tone of that. I certainly understand uh, that we need to develop credibility with the county. And I'm sensitive to that. And I could live with some minor changes. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Montemayor, you're next. Second time. Thank you, Your Honor. I think we should keep this as pure and clean as it is. Perhaps if um, Alderman Serda wants to bring in a, a future resolution asking for a feasibility study on the part of the city, maybe we could consider that. Thank you. Alderman Graff. Second. Thank time. you, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to try and, and see if Alderman Serda will agree with, with this. Going down to the therefore be it resolved paragraph, um, that the mayor is authorized and directed to contact Sheboygan County and request information for this feasibility study, which includes the structure cost and other pertinent information for Sheboygan County to potentially provide emergency dispatch services for the city of Sheboygan or for the city of Sheboygan to provide emergency dispatch services for the county, for Sheboygan County. Would, would that suffice? Alderman Groff, thank you. I'll, I'll, uh, Vice President Sarda, would you like to respond to that? I guess my question would be, how does that change what I was asking for? I guess what you're doing is you're putting the control in the county's hands to tell us what's best for them in terms of us providing them their service. We need to put ourselves first and foremost. And I think by putting my amendment in here, Again, we're taking a leadership role, a proactive role from the city standpoint. And again, I don't foresee us jeopardizing our relationship with the county. We're just providing the information, the same argument which is being used to support this resolution. Alderman Ryan, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to, to keep this, this resolution as it is right now, uh, the. The way I interpret this and the way I think anybody would interpret this to read it is that the, the county will provide the study. Uh, if, if, it was, if I was providing the study and it's to my advantage to be that person that would take over, that organization that would take over dispatch services, I believe my study would say that it is in the interest of the city of Sheboygan to give the dispatch services to the county. Uh, therefore, I believe that, that there needs to be a, a, a study that is done looking at the interests of both the city and the county uh, with, with an unbiased uh, uh, opinion going into it. If, if the county does the study, the county is going to come up with the conclusion, almost guaranteed, that the, it is best for the city to have the county do dispatch services. They would be foolish not to. Uh, therefore, I, I, I do believe that we have to have something in here that it also needs to be explored that the if it would be feasible or better, uh, more economical, et cetera, for the city to provide the same service for the county. Thank you. Thank you. And again, 
it's very difficult to understand the substance and the context under which that uh, resolution was drafted if you weren't at the meeting. So, and I appreciate your, your comments, and they're, uh, they're well intended and certainly uh, well taken. But all the county was asking is if you want us to even consider telling you what we could do for you, at what cost, and what would be involved, we need council approval. We need a resolution telling us we have voted as a council. And I think Alderman Vanderbilt remembers that. That's all they wanted. They don't want to look at it unless we do that. It's nothing about control. It's nothing about turf war. The council will still be free to say no. No control. There's no control issue here. Because when it comes back and they say, OK, here's what we can do. Here's what the county can do for you. The council will look at it and say yes or say no. Thank you very much. We're going to move on. That's the only issue that was before. Us. There's, not, there's no issue of control or who's going to control this or the turf or anything like that. All they wanted to do is if the council shows us by a resolution that they want us to look into it, that tells them that the council is more serious than it's ever been before to look at something and spend time and effort, and then they get back to us and you're free to vote it down or not. That's all it was. I have no objection to anything else. If you want to add, I mean, if you want to distort this whole resolution into pieces, that's fine. But it's, it's, that's all it was. Again, uh, I'll, pardon me? Is there a second to that? Second. Second. And uh, we have a call to the question. Yep. This okay. would be on the amendment, and it reads, to add to, after the second paragraph, it would read, whereas the city of Sheboygan through the Shared Services Committee should conduct its own feasibility study outlining how they could potentially provide emergency dispatch services for the county. Before we call the vote, I just ask, uh, with no offense to Alderman Serta, when the mayor is talking, please let him finish talking before you interrupt. And I would ask that same courtesy to be extended to Alderman if we're going to call, make motions to let, let the alderman finish. Please call the roll. Hannah. No. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. No. Manny. No. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Ryan. Aye. Susha. No. Vanderweel. No. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. No. Berg. No. Serta. Aye. Davis. No. And Graf. Four eyes, 12 no's. Motion fails. We have the original motion as uh, read, 8, 842. Please call the vote. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 843 to 845 lies over. 846 to 850 to be referred. And uh, I believe President Berg would like to call one upon its passage. President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, call 849 forward for passage rather than referral uh, for public information. Please, if we should proceed. Please do. That uh, this relates to establishing pet friendly areas and city parks uh, within the city motion. of Sheboygan. Make a motion. Uh, motion. Oh, yes, I move that uh, the resolution be placed upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Yes, under discussion. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, this resolution uh, uh, is uh, a fish or cut bait resolution that either we are going to approve the current standard of not allowing pets in parks or we direct the uh, Parks and Recreation and Forestry uh, Committee to look closely at establishing uh, pet friendly areas and parks. Uh, resolution reads that the Park and Forestry Commission review the experience of other communities that have established pet friendly areas and develop a plan that will allow families to recreate with their pets at locations that are geographically convenient and will minimize the impact on those individuals not wishing contact with such animals. 
This came about as a result of the last committee of the whole meeting, where rather than taking our uh, parks park by park and making a decision, should we allow pets to uh, be in parks on leash or not on leash, I feel it's important rather than uh, this deliberative body deal with that to put this to a committee, have them take a look at it, and then come back to the council if uh, the council so approves of allowing pets in parks. And at that point in time, it reaches a threshold of public uh, discussion regarding the various areas uh, that they would recommend. Thank you. Thank you, President Berg. Uh, Ola McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor, but I need to pull something else forward. Or suspend something else. Let's let's take a vote on the 849. Are you uh, thinking of 844? Please. We'll we'll take that one after this one. Let's uh, let President Berg handle the 849. Under discussion, 849 still. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just think that this is a positive, proactive move. I mean, it's time to. I hear lots of feedback from my constituents. Uh, they just want this analyzed and debated in earnest and to move forward. I think it's a positive for the community. And I think it could be done in a well-balanced, controlled way that those that are pet lovers will be happy and those that are not comfortable around animals can be happy too. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to also express those views. I have a lot of constituents that are concerned about the parks and where they can walk their dogs. And I know a lot of people are concerned about dogs biting and making messes. And I think if we do look at other communities and find out what is working for them, I'm sure we can implement that here in Sheboygan. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Having been chairman of the Park and Forestry Commission for the last year prior to uh, being an alderman, I've been exposed to a lot of information on this dog in the park issue and so on dogs in friendly areas. And uh, with all of that information, my position has evolved somewhat from let's keep them away from the general public to, hey, maybe. Um, we could spare a few parks on the north, south side, maybe one in the middle, two, maybe three parks, but at least a park or two. So that's where I stand today, and I think the Park Commission has a, has a situation in front of them and opportunities. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Ryan is next. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I, too, agree that uh, we, we should have dogs in, in, in multiple parks, uh, not, entire, not, not exactly the entire park. You know, certain areas of certain parks, there are people that frankly don't like animals. Uh, there's some children that are afraid of animals. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you know, we're not, we're not talking about letting the dogs run, run wild. We just should uh, have multiple locations that if you want to walk your dog out of your condominium or your apartment, your home, that you can walk to a park rather than throwing Fido in the trunk and having to you know, bring him you know, 15 miles away in order to find the park. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this has been an issue that I've been dealing with off and on with, with citizens for since I became alderman for going up five years now. And every time we we try to do something for the dogs, it's like running uphill. It's the hardest thing and everybody's against it. You got a few people for it. We just need to pick two parks, one on the north side, one on the south side, and allow pets. Because sometimes it seems like we forget that dog owners are taxpayers too, and, and people really want to be able to take their dogs to a park. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. It's time we put this thing to bed. It's, it's getting to the point of being ridiculous. We are in a growing community here. We're bringing people in. We're getting away from the industrial base that we once had. We're going to more professional tourism type of situation. One park on the south side, one park on the north side. What good does that do me when I want to walk my dog in my neighborhood and see you know, the local park that, you know, the taxpayers are paying for. I have to pay a license to have my dogs, and I don't want to put my dog in a car. You drive past these parks on a regular basis, there's people running dogs in these parks anyway. And if, by the time you call the police department, they get out there, they're gone. So it doesn't pay to call the police. I mean, but they're out there anyway. And we need to do something. We can't just limit to one or two parks in the city. We need to be fair and open it up to the neighborhood parks. Certain areas, not the whole parks, but... Uh, for example, we've got large parks that, you know, areas of the parks aren't used away from the playground areas. They're just big fields. What's wrong with using those big fields? People are, are doing it now already. We need to get uh, 
get on the boat here and start moving forward with this because this city needs to move forward and cater to the people that we're trying to attract here, not trying to you know, send them away because we're not going to um, have the ability for them to walk their pets in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Owen Ratke. There being no more, please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. We're going to back up a little bit here to 844. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull this document forward. Okay, please proceed. And then I would like, um, or I mean, I should pull it backward, but anyhow, I'd ask for suspension of the rules, please. <laughs> this motion is a second to suspend. Is there any objection to suspending? Please continue. Then under, um, uh, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put resolution 844 by Alderman Groff, Hannah, Clayuna, Susha, and Boren authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget upon its passage. Please continue. Under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, this is for um, the new Walmart project, uh, and it will be reimbursed to the city by Walmart, but uh, the city development office asked that this could be processed tonight so that um, they can get started at it right away tomorrow morning. So um, that's the reason for suspension and why it needs to be passed. Thank you, Alderman Grau. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Susha, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Clyunas. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 6851 by Law and Licensing recommending denying beverage, beverage operators license number 71. 44 based upon failure to cooperate with the committee and for having violations related to the license activity. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Under discussion? Under discussion is Kayla, Gar Kayla Garcia here this evening. She's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer. Montemayor. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas? And Manny? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 852 by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Mike Muth stating that he is in support of creating a dead end on 21st Street at the intersection of 21st and Calumet Drive and approving the dead, the dead end. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to uh, send the report of the committee to accept and adopt. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Under discussion? Under discussion, uh, Public Works agreed with this. The Public Protection Safety agreed with this. And we're not going to vacate the street. We're just going to make a dead end and keep the right away. Thank you, Alderman. Honor Will. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as most of you will remember, the last time this issue came up, I did quite an extensive accident analysis, and I shared it with those of you that were on the council at that time. Um, I'm not going to get into that tonight. Uh, the comments I do make here tonight are intended to inform my constituents as to why I'm going to void it, vote against permanently closing North 21st Street. Um, as I've said before, the police, Sheboygan Police Department is doing a great job fighting crime, and I'm proud to say that the Sheboygan area was ranked the fifth safest community in the United States of America last year. That is something to be very proud of. Just because I disagree with one accident analysis and uh, the reason it was done um, doesn't mean that I think the police aren't collectively doing a great job. They truly are. Um, to give you some background on my past experience, I spent over 15 years reviewing technical data that was printed in medical journey, journals during my career with a pharmaceutical company. When you're looking at studies 
you're looking for uh, the parameters that would lead you to believe it's a good study as if that it, a study is randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled, multi-centered studies. These are the ones that get printed in journals. That's what I'm used to dealing with, high-quality information. One of the parameters that is just a given is that the time frames when you're doing a comparative study, they must be equal. To give you an example, if you were to compare aspirin to ibuprofen, you couldn't reach a valid conclusion about side effects if you studied one medication for several years and compared it to the other medication that was only studied for a few months. When you look at 21st Street in Sheboygan, you cannot reach a valid conclusion if you look at 29 months of data when the road was open and compare it to seven months of data when the road was closed. It's a very misleading uh, statement uh, when people are told that there were 26, 26 accidents when the road was open and it was reduced to zero accidents when the road was closed. A more accurate way of looking at this information is that if you were to state the number of accidents that happened between the dates of May 15th and December 15th. For example, in 2003, there were only five accidents. In 2004, there were eight accidents. This is a more accurate way of staying, stating the information that was presented by the police department. As far as the number of accidents that occurred when the road was closed, that's a question I have for Sergeant Chizinski. But I don't think he's here. Perhaps Deputy Chief Weiss could step up to the podium and maybe answer them. Deputy Chief. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, what can I help you with? Thank you, Deputy Chief. On December 13th, Officer Williams said at the Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting, and I will quote directly what he said, in the time period that we closed off 21st at Calumet Drive, we've had zero accidents at either of those intersections. It's eliminated the problem there. And then on February 15th, 2006, Sergeant Chizinski discussed this issue on WHBL, and he said all the 26 accidents went away. All right. Now, aldermen often make decisions based on these oral reports from various city employees. And I find myself in a quandary when I receive information that contradicts itself. Last December, I requested copies of numerous accident reports that occurred all over the city. And Sergeant Chizinski kindly prepared all the information I requested. The con quandary that he puts me in is that there were several accidents reports that were attached to a note written on his personalized stationery. The top of the personalized stationery clearly said from the desk of Thomas J. Chijinsky, traffic sergeant, and the contents of the note was something like older person Susha attached are all the accidents that occurred in the area since the road was closed. So the quandary I'm in is we get these oral reports that say zero, but yet I have a handwritten note on personalized stationery with accident reports attached to it that occurred in that time frame. So which information is accurate? Well, I think, uh, first of all, you, did you ask uh, Lieutenant Williams or Sergeant Tazinski, those specific questions, they, they would probably be the best source to answer the notes on their own paper. I can assure you that Sergeant Tazinski or Lieutenant Williams was not trying to trick anybody. They certainly don't have the analysis that uh, in the background to study aspirins and ibuprofen, uh, your kind of background. They did not put uh, that kind of depth into their study as far as uh, whether or not there's a, you know, uh, ibuprofen is going to work or the years that you study it. They dealt with it as a community policing project. They did the best they could. They weren't mis misleading you in any way. They weren't lying to you. Now, the specific questions that you have, you probably should ask them. And if you want to write them down, I'll make sure that they have them so they can answer your question. Okay, so you don't know which information no, is accurate. I, I didn't even see the notes that you're talking about. Okay. Well, too bad they're not here to answer that for all of us because it sure would clear up issues in my mind. But anyway, um, moving on. Um, just to put things in perspective in regards to the number of accidents, and I don't know if you have this data either, do you know off the top of your head approximately how many accidents will occur at a busy intersection like 14th and Erie in a year? No, I believe that is our, our most busiest action, uh, intersection for accidents. Um, no, I don't know the exact figure. I don't want to mislead you. Well, I'd say it's safe to say that at that intersection, it's double digits. At the intersection we're closing, it's single digits. And that's where I kind of have a problem, 
is that you know we're closing something based on very small numbers. It didn't, was not 26 to 0. That's a misleading statement. And there's some other information here, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Are you aware that Mr. Muth, is, who is one of the two property owners adjacent to this street, that he's got a $600,000 loan from the city, and one of the covenants of his agreement is for him to vacate his property on North Avenue and move to the industrial park by the end of 2004. Were you aware of that? No. Okay. He did request and receive an extension from Mayor Schramm, so he doesn't have to relocate his business till 2009. But hypothetically speaking, this is where it all kind of comes to a head, is that if Mr. Muth moves to the industrial park in 2009, as it states in his agreement for his loan, if he vacates his building, and hypothetically speaking, if we have a developer that comes in and puts up a strip mall or puts up a Walgreens, if we close the street today based on safety issues, how are we going to justify future development and allow them to have open up their parking lot so cars can cross Calumet Drive and cars can cross North Avenue? I mean, if you were closing the street based on for the purpose of development, I could understand that and support that. For the purpose of safety, I think we're going to be putting ourselves in a corner for any future development that goes in that that area of town because we're not going to be able to approve it. So what would happen down the line if we if we develop this area? How are you going to open up the parking and just well, that? Well, I think the council would just have to open up the street. The council has all the authority to uh, redo things that they've done in the past. If things don't turn out right, they can re-examine that issue and open it up so if a Walgreens goes in there. So you're saying today we should close it for public safety and then tomorrow I'm we I'm not bringing this it. forward. Okay. I, I didn't bring this forward here. Whoever brought this motion forward. But. It may be okay. bad. <coughs> Excuse well, me. But. That, answers, that pretty much answers my question. So I just wanted my constituents to understand for the purpose of development, I would close that road. But I'm not going to do it under being misled to think it's strictly for public safety. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Felicia. Alderman Hanna, do you have anything for uh, sure. Deputy Chief or not? No, I don't. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Alderman Hanna? Sure. I have to uh, thank you, Mayor. I have to admit that when 21st Street was open there, it was my favorite shortcut. And I've, but I have grown to deal with it. And uh, my wife always chided me for using that shortcut because she thought I was making a risky move. I have learned to use the light, and it's been fine. I've ad adopted and adapted to the, to the change. I've not heard from any constituents uh, that's you know, contiguous to my, to my area. I've not heard any complaints from constituents wanting it to be opened. Uh, so I can live with it being uh, made into a dead end. Very good. Thank you, sir. Alderman Serta. Vice President Serta. Excuse me. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just would like to make a suggestion and use this as a teachable moment. Um, obviously, it was um, self-evident that Alder Person Susha was well prepared to, um, to address the council and provide her input. And I think in terms of asking questions, it might be best if we would give a heads up to the departments, the department heads, their staff, that if we're going to address some questions to them, um, just to prepare them ahead of time. Um, I felt that they were, the police department was a little bit ill-equipped to answer these questions, and I think it would just service us all better if we could communicate prior to the meeting. That way we can um, address those questions appropriately. Just a suggestion. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question for Alderman uh, Vander Willey. When, when you said that, that this was going to be, was going to become a dead end and a one-way, did you say, or? Oh, okay. It's just going to become a dead end. No, a, a dead end, right? Uh, Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what I said earlier was that we're going to make it a dead end, uh, the way where the barricades are right now, and we're not going to vacate it. We're going to keep it uh, the right of way, is what I said. Right we're going to keep the right of way so that uh, we're still on the street. It's already closed right now, anyway. Correct. So all you're going to do is remove that ugly barricade and take care of what you need to take care of and leave it, leave it as it is. And as Alderman Hanna pointed out, there have been no complaints, at least in his district. Yes, sir. And also, may I add that we had borrowed those from the county, and now we can give them back to the county. <laughs> Thank you. Shared services. Yes. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Anything else? Okay. We will call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Boren? No. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer?
13 ayes and three noes. Motion carries, report of committee seven, 853 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7134 based on failure to cooperate with the committee, failure to reveal the violation and for having violations related to the license activity. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to re refer this back to committee. Second. There's a motion and a second to re refer back to committee under discussion. Oh, I've talked to this gentleman and he will be in at the next meeting, so we're going to give him one more shot. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Will be re referred. Ordinance has introduced 10, 854 to 855. Lies over. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question. Will I be able to suspend the rules on 855? <clears throat> It, uh, it involves, it would involve money, so. You can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I would make a motion to suspend the rules on 855. Is there a, there's a second, motion and a second. Uh, any, any objection? Aye. You object, we will call the vote. The vote. Okay, uh, excuse me, who seconded the motion to? Thank you. Okay. We're gonna call the vote on the uh, suspension. suspension. We need two thirds vote. Mm -hmm. Three quarters. Three quarters, Three quarters vote. Three quarters vote. Which would be suspend. 12, 12. 12 votes to suspend. Yep. Otherwise, it lies over. Please call the roll. All right. Um, Radke. Aye. Ryan. Excuse me, does it say vote to suspend? To this suspend. is a, an I vote would be to suspend the rules. No. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. Hannah? No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. Nine ayes, seven noes. Motion fails. 855 will lie over. 856 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 521, and RO, RO number 550607 by the City Plan Commission recommending vacating a portion of the unpaved alley between located, vacating a portion of the unpaved alley located between Maryland Avenue and Illinois Avenue west of South 17th Street. Alderman Montemayor. I move to accept and file the RO and put the ordinance upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. No? Yes, please. Oh, please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I think this might be troublesome. I think it's a perfectly good idea. We're going to vacate an, an unused alley. One little problem. The alley is that land is going to be given to Alderman Kittleson, which it's perfectly innocent. It's not used much. And even though another person owns most of it, it's almost a 50-50 bargain between the other person and Alderman Kittleson. And I think we should vacate it, but I'm worried this is gonna set an ugly precedent that we're giving land to a sitting alderman. And I don't know if we should be concerned with that or not. Okay, any other, Alderman Hanna. Honorable Mayor, thank you. We'll, uh... Once the land is given to Alderman Kittleson, she'll begin paying taxes on it? Sure. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Attorney McLean? Thank you. Just, uh, just to clarify, the city doesn't deed property over to the abutting properties when the uh, street right away is vacated. It, it returns back to the original owner by operational law. So. You're not giving anything to anybody. It's, it's there already, but legally sort of superimposed over that is the city's ownership of it. So when the city's ownership, when you vacate it, that evaporates, and then the presumption is that uh, the abutting properties own to the center of the former street right away. So, and as far as Alderman Kittleson, I, I believe she should abstain as far as that goes, but. This is the process for vacation that the statutes provide, and uh, you know the fact that 
an older person, it may affect an older person. Uh, you can't really, uh, you know, an older person doesn't lose their, their rights under the statute just because they're an alderman. So uh, I, I would advise Alderman Kittleson to abstain, but I don't see that this sets any unreasonable precedent or anything like that. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Any other discussion? There being none, we will call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Abstain. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 15 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries 729 RO number 1150607 by the City Planning Commission recommending amending the zoning for property located at 1804 Martin Avenue from class urban commercial to urban industrial classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Verhasselt, Boren, Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. and Ryan. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 747, resolution number 630607 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Clionis, Susha, and Boren authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second to put it upon its passage. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Thank you. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graff. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clionis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Yeah. Okay. Meyer. Montemayor, aye. Radke, aye. Ryan, aye. and Susha. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion passes 720, uh, 759, General Ordinance number 120607 by Alderman Vanderwill, Serta, Meyer, Montemayor, and Berg, relating to traffic signs to remove yield signs for eastbound and westbound traffic on Oakland Avenue at various locations. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the General Ordinance upon its passage. Motion and second, put it upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, uh, we looked at this in public protection safety, and a uh, resident had a concern in that area about a stop sign, and uh, the engineering department looked at it, and it was decided that there was a lot of yield signs in the area, and we'd be better fit if there were stop signs at uh, this day and age. So that's what we're doing. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I was simply going to say what Alderman Vanderwill already said. Thank you. Very good. Reiteration. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to say I'm glad that we're finally going to do something in this area. I believe last year we had people that came in with the same complaints, and last year we did nothing. But this year we are fixing it, so I'm glad we're doing it. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. and Vanderweel. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. 857 is a communication from Richard Hartman regarding accepted procedures for all members of committees when they present letters, documents on an issue before that committee. And that will be referred to Committee of the Whole. Oh, uh, President Berg? Uh, yes, if I could please, Your Honor. There is one other matter. It's the birthday of our city clerk today. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks, Alderman Berg. <laughs> the other matter being, happy birthday, Madam City Clerk. Thank you. Wish you a, a lot more years. Thank Is you that very it? much. Alderman Groff, sir, did you have something? I wanted to do the exact same thing, but um, Almondberg beat me to it. So. Why don't you make a motion to adjourn then? I will so move. <laughs> oh, excuse me. There's a motion and a second to adjourn before we do, Chief. Uh, oh, would you please, sir? Okay. Um, no, hold on. The public will want to hear this. 
Uh, just for everybody's information, the city of Sheboygan is under a severe uh, thunderstorm warning right now for the next about half an hour roughly. So you might want to take that into consideration on your travels home. Thank you, Chief. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.